John Boland. What's up, brother? Thanks for uh, coming on and doing this. I appreciate you. Thank you. <sighs> this is this. I knew this was a possibility. Well, what here. did you expect? I, I knew this is a possibility. You look upset. That's I, I'm not upset. You look I, upset. That, <laughs> I knew this was a possibility. Well, you know I hate this stuff. I know you do, which is why I'm even more appreciative than you could imagine. You know. And I do. I, I appreciate it. But uh, so <laughs> this is the burn pit. The what? The burn pit. You got some sweet microphones here. This is a great setup. Do you ever sing in these things? The, no. Little, Listen. Little, we are the world. So for the, <laughs> the, the listening, viewing audience that's going to see this, you uh, have to give a little introduction, a little bio to who you are. And then once, <laughs> just briefly introduce yourself, and then I'll tell the audience how I know you. And they then don't I'm, I'm, care. Well, hey, go ahead. And then I'm going to read a, a, a little snippet from your Wikipedia page. Uh, it's probably fake. Who, no, I don't know. Who no. makes the Wikipedia page? I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. Right. Literally, I have no idea. Like, right. I don't, like when I had that little brief thing, somebody was like, you have a Wikipedia page? And I was like, cool. All right. Because compu just computers and me, it's like one of my you're, five biggest fears. You're computer literate. Right. All right. All right. Give, give me a little bio. Born from sisters, brothers, anything like that. Give me, for the audience. I already know you, but go. Give me something. <laughs> what, what year are you born? <laughs> Stuff like that. Born in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Uh, youngest of three. Two older sisters, Merle and Jane, mother and father. Nice. Uh, Merle was the father, Jane, mother. And then moved to Uniontown, about an hour south of Pittsburgh, when I was like eight. Grew up there. Was in the sports, all that jazz, you know. Yeah. Like growing up, your heroes back in the day were like, you know, Arnold and Stallone, and he just wanted to be big, jacked, and play sports. That's about it. What, what sport? What sports are you into? Uh, growing up, I played football, baseball, a little bit of wrestling, nice. mainly football, baseball. That was my thing. I should have played baseball in college, but I ended up playing football. Where'd you go to uh, college? Cal, California University of Pennsylvania, Berkeley. That's <laughs> California <laughs> University of Ber Pennsylvania. It's California Berkeley of Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, like that's Division Two. The Golden Boy. That's yeah. the, you got a uh, scholarship? Nah, I had to walk on, and then I earned a scholarship. And Good then, stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Now you all there all four years. Yep. Graduated. Yep. You got a bachelor's degree and a master's and a master's. What well, the bachelor's in what? Political science. Get the f out of here! Really, <laughs> poli sci. Mm -hmm. What What about the masters? Geography and regional planning. So, so uh, getting that master's degree, uh, you, what was the plan with that? To coach division, or to coach football, college oh, and pro football. Ah. You need a master's degree in order to coach football in oh, college really? or pros. Yes. Huh. I don't know if you remember the one coach. Years ago, there was a guy from Georgia Tech. He got hired by Notre Dame. Ended up lying on his resume uh, that he had a that. master's degree. Yeah, I do remember that. Don Nel uh, Not Don Nelson. No, I can't remember his name. But uh, so you, you get a master, uh, you probably a GA. Then you were a graduate assistant. Graduate assistant, yeah. Good stuff. Okay, uh, but I mean, I never had so much fun losing in my life. <laughs> <laughs> we were god awful. Cal, Cal, you the peace act back conference. then. We were terrible. It's a, a, for for those uh, listening, di divi that Division Two uh, football conference is filled with uh, it's good football. So good, oh, good, great, great football. Yeah, uh, Clarion University. Uh, you, you, you know, IUP Indiana University of Pennsylvania, Edinburgh. Uh, that's on the the west side of the state of Pennsylvania. Yeah. The east side was like Westchester and um, Kutztown and uh, Shippensburg. Right. Um, all right, so graduating uh, after college. Yeah. Well, well, we'll, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. <laughs> let me let me at least tell the audience how I know you. All right. Okay. So <clears throat> this was winter of two thousand and five. You want to jump right into that? We'll go. Okay. We'll go back. We'll uh, go back. All right. Uh, all do right. your thing. So two two thousand five, I am working at a. Uh, country bar nightclub in Station Square in Pittsburgh. It was the first country saloon in the city that the city had seen. And it was owned by the same company that owned another nightclub bar, Margarita Mamas. They were in the, in the same warehouse. That place doesn't exist anymore. In Station Square in Pittsburgh. I don't even think Station Square exists. Anymore. Well, where, where it was is now a huge apartment complex. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the most so, buildings and shit. But at the time... In, the early 2000s, it was a huge warehouse. And uh, it, before Margaret Mobs and Saddle, Rod Woodson had a place in there. 
Filthy McNasties was there. Hooters. It was like a, Hooters was in there. Did we watch a gimmick there? Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. So, um, watch the guy get tased. Well, that was there. So. <laughs> but here, so here, uh, the security manager at the time was a guy by the name of Steve Curit, and he was uh, the United States strongest man. And he, he had been on uh, the Metric Strongman competition on ESPN, but he was mostly working at the Margarita Mama's location. And he kind of put me in charge of hiring in, at Saddle Ridge. So here, one day, this hostess comes up to me, and she goes, hey, this guy's here. He's looking to, for a job. And I look over, and you're standing there. And you're wearing this big flannel, like how you were just wearing yeah, Saturday show. Just, uh, and you had this, this long black hair. And I looked over, and I was like, I profiled you right away. And this, this guy's one of those meatheads. You were enormous. You were huge. Like you are right now. You are right now. So anyways, I, I'm like, uh, so I went over. I, we didn't even really talk or greet each other. I just said, hey, you know, we're not really hiring right now. And you were cool. Like you, So wrong. I was. So I lied. No. I lied to you. No, no. Your whole recollection no. of this story You were standing ass. over there and I came over. Bro, that is not what that's happened. That's exactly what happened. That is so not what happened. You came in and I Nowhere go, hey, near. we're not hiring Nowhere right near. now. Nowhere near. Nowhere near. No chick What's your recollection? You. I went up to some chick and I was like, who do I talk to you about getting hired? Some woman, some girl, sorry. It was. Whatever. Correct. And I said to her, Where, who do I see about getting hired? She said, go outside. I went outside. Your goofball douche ass was sitting there like That's... this with your back to me. And I went, excuse me, are you hiring? Or you turn and you went. No. <laughs> and I went, Okay. No, I could have sworn cool. you were, it was nah, inside. It was that you were outside. You were outside See, on the patio. Dude, bro, you were outside on okay. the patio where right. I ran the whole racket, so I don't even want right, to start fair with enough, that. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay? Fair enough. And well, that, well, I'll accept that story, happened. But I did deny you. I go, I go. Oh, uh, you were such a putz. You were like, no, we don't hire. Right. right. And I was like, all right, all whatever. Right. So here, let's fast forward maybe like a week later. Uh, I take my dad to Life Force Fitness Center in Whitehall. That's in Whitehall. Yeah, it's in right. Whitehall. So he's he, my dad is a diabetic and that's a that's a brutal disease and his doctor's like hey you got to start eating right you got to go to the gym you got to do all that stuff uh, so I take him to this gym Wilford gave him the diabetes yes right yeah right and life life force uh, I sign him up we're in there and he's over in like the machines and stuff because they gave him like a routine to go off of and I'm just I'm there to support him so I go and I'm getting my workouts in and stuff like that and I see you there. And you come over and ask for a spot. I did ask for a spot. And there's like, you're doing incline press with like 405 on the bar, and then you're supersetting it with uh, bent over rows. With four, you're a freak. You're, you're a freak. You're doing bent over rows with like 405. So you, here, uh, you uh, ask for a spot. I spot you. And uh, then we shook hands afterwards. You introduced yourself formally because we recognized each other from the Saddle Ridge. I think I was like, hey, did you? And you were like, yeah, it was me. And I was like, oh, cool. Some like one of those meathead right. man moments. Sh sure. But much. when I shook your hand, oh, I God. gave you, I'm sorry, you got to do this. Yeah. <laughs> you got to do this. I, when I shook your hand, uh -huh. you, uh, I gave you the, the wrestling handshake, you know? Which you didn't even know. And like, but I, I was. I did anything. I know. Or... I didn't. I didn't know. I did. I had no clue. But right. come to find out. You know, when I, you asked me what else I do, and I, at the time I was in the moving and storage uh, industry, and uh, I asked you what you did, and you said, you know, I'm a personal trainer here, and I'm a professional wrestler. And of course, me being a Mark. A Mark. Now, explain to the audience oh what a Mark God. is, real quick. A real super quick. fan. So, a Mark is a term, terminology yes. from the, in the wrestling business yeah. that wrestlers use to describe their fans. But here's the deal, though everybody's a Mark. Including the wrestlers themselves. The wrestlers are the biggest marks. And the promoters are even bigger marks than the wrestlers. Interesting. See how I'm saying? So when I when I shake your hand like that, because I was a mark at the time, right? Yes. This handshake is to let the other wrestlers know that you're not stiff. I guess. Right? Something like that. But you said something to me. Like, ah, whatever. So then I said, I know a guy. I think we have a mutual connection. Yeah. And his name was Chuck Kozlowski. And he was with uh, IWC, which mm -hmm. st stands for uh, the International Wrestling Cartel. And that was the shows that were being uh, <clears throat> put on. Was in Elizabeth, I think? Yeah. All right. Yeah. It was, it was, it was like South. Yeah. 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 And you had a, a bunch of big names there. You had a, a ton of big names. Yeah, there was yeah. a ton. Uh, so what was – here's what, what surprised me and took me back. And this is where I had some regret. And I, I realized that I fucked up. I saw you – 
over with my dad, and you were trying to show him some things on the machine, and, and you were really good with him, like really gentle and uh, I didn't patient. I it was your dad, did you're, I? You're, No, you were really patient with him, too. And I looked over, and I thought, I fucked up. I, I stereotyped this guy. I thought he was going to be a meathead with a short fuse and all this other stuff. And Which I, is basically what the fuck you were. Uh, well, are. kind of, but you're more menacing looking. How the hell? <laughs> you're more menacing dude, looking. Dude, I'm sh- like short, man. You're, you're tall. You're, dude, you were as wide. Uh, you're wide now, but Whatever. you were as wide as like two refrigerators. I don't know. But, don't know. So, <laughs> Mini fridges <laughs> right. that you put like cold six packs right. of pop. Right. So right. over the years. Yes. You and I got along really well. Right. And we became lifting partners mm-hmm. uh, up until the point where. So were you Hans or Franz? You would, uh, you dude, you would have been the, uh, well, yeah. Franco. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here we got along really well. Right. Uh, and then up until the point where, and we'll get into this, you got signed by the WWE and you had to leave. And I didn't see you for like years. Right. And I talked about this with uh, my previous guests about how there's certain people in your life. That you can you can not be around them for a long time. Uh, they just pick right and up. And once you get back to yeah. the boom, boom, boom. So, uh, <clears throat> but I mean, well, like it's to be expected, though. Right. I mean, we got along. Think uh, about what I wore to your wedding. Yeah, we can talk about that too. He he wore a tuxedo that he bought from Goodwill. Yes. Uh, the sleeves were cut off. No, the shirt underneath was cut off. <laughs> <laughs> and then you ended up wearing my, I had a, I have a two-year-old daughter that had a white dress on, and he ended up, uh, she ended up changing into a My like, head was cold. You put her dress on your head thing. and yeah, w- walking head. around with it, and then you also wanted to throw uh, another groomsman through a table. It was, Powerbomb. Yeah, it was great. Table. So, anyways. And that one. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, here, uh, get, getting into... Your life, we're going to go back now. Getting into your life after college. I'm going to read a brief snippet of your Wikipedia page. I've never even read my Wikipedia page. Then this will be interesting. Great. So here on on your Wikipedia page, Mm -hmm. it says, Jonathan Boland, an American professional wrestler and bodybuilder. I don't know about bodybuilder. He currently competes in the independent circuit in wrestling. I did. After winning the total nonstop action wrestling's gut check challenge in 2004 yep. he briefly signed to the company WWE before then sign or br- briefly signed to the company the TNA before then signing a developmental contract with World Wrestling Entertainment and you were assigned to their developmental territory which is like modern day NXT I never really signed anything with TNA okay it was like I won their deal I won some loot and so then they sent me to Canada to train. The gut check challenge. The there. gut check challenge is a lot like uh, tough enough. Yeah, it was kind of right? like that, but it was like a two day deal. The winner gets a contract, right? Well, you think you get a contract. I mean, come on, but like you get the you get the opportunity. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Legit, you get the opportunity to become trained, and then you know, yeah, try to become a professional wrestler and make the best out of it. So, Ohio Valley Wrestling, or OVW, is in Louisville, Kentucky. Yes. And that's, like, modern-day NXT. Right. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. All right. So, here, it also says you were in Deep South. Yes, for a small snippet. And you were one half of the tag team called High Dosage. That was it in Louisville. Okay. And that and you, your tag team partner was Ryan Ry- Reeves. Ryan Reeves, yes. Who then went on to become, as Ryback. the audience would know, Ryback. Yes. All right. So... This is a little snippet that says, after your graduation of, uh, from Cal U, you got into uh, some powerlifting. Yes. And you eventually set the state bench press, press record here in, in PA. Yeah. And it, uh, this is if this is accurate, uh, you tell me. 670 pounds. Mm-hmm. 670. 670. Now, people are going to hear this, right? 670. Let me, let me just say this. There are gym bros, like big gym bros. <laughs> right. They don't deadlift and squat that. That's fine. Good right? for them. But there's but some sure they're squatting a lot there. But you're, you're bench pressing 670 pounds. To get an idea of that, that would be seven plates on each side. Seven. That's roughly seven plates on each side. Yeah. That's a freak. That's a freak. You're yeah. a freak. You're a freak. And still today, it says, the, uh, the Wikipedia page says. I'm it's, sure that thing's been beat by right now. It says, it says it's still, still the state record. All right. So here you're doing all these uh, power lifting and bench press meets and stuff like that. Yeah. And you meet a gentleman uh, that, that was the former uh, Gold Jim's Venice owner. Right. His name. Ed Connors. Ed Connors. So this is pretty accurate. Right. Uh, who happened to be in town for this uh, event 
and during this, he was in town for a bodybuilding show. Okay, and then a buddy of mine introduced me to him. Now he eventually encouraged you to go to this gut check. Yeah, challenge. he literally looked at me and was like, "Dude, you need to become a professional wrestler." And I was like, "All right." So this wasn't this. even on your docket. This wasn't even on the radar. I mean, this was like on the radar, like maybe when I was sixteen and I blew my back out. And long story long, I went to see a doctor who was actually in the movie Concussion, Julian Bales. Really? Yes. And I remember it was, was Will Smith, right? Yes. It was like filmed it here Will in Smith, Pittsburgh. Yes. Yeah. I went to actually see that doctor. I was 16. It was my sophomore year in high school. And, like, from that, I had, like, two or any of this then. And Dang. he was like, what are you planning on doing? And I was, like, playing high school football and college football. And he was Which like, you did. He was like, what do you want to do after that? And I swear to God, just as a joke, I was like, I'm going to become a professional wrestler. Like, it was never really in my... You know, and then right. like, I mean, I thought about it a lot, but you got I got a great thought, look, great look. I always thought I was too short. Oh, you look like guys like Chris Benoit was, and all those guys. I always thought I was too short and like rest like, ah, it's such a sick, ah, whatever. Anyway, like I never worried about getting hurt. In it. It's just weird. Like wrestling can make you like, it can make the, the, it can show any business, show business, whatever you say, can make anybody insecure. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like, or it's like. When you power lifted, when you played football, you never gave a shit what the hell you look like. And all of a sudden, they're like, hey, man, where are these trunks? And you're like, <laughs> yeah, hey, you right. me? Let me see like, you basically what? naked. Let yeah. me see your body right. completely well, naked. Well, not even that. It's just like, hey, man, yeah, if you grab a hold, don't let me sit on my ass. Make sure I'm <laughs> sucking my stomach in. You yeah, know? right. You want to look as best like, as yeah, possible. dude, right? Right. It's an aesthetic sport. It is. Well, aesthetic <clears throat> sport entertainment. All right. So, uh once the uh, the gut check challenge, you win the gut check challenge right. for the TNA. And TNA, for the uh, listeners, was, at the time, was probably the only competition that WWE had. Yeah. Because yeah. they had already bought WCW. Right. Um, now, after you win that competition, you go into the independent circuit. Mm-hmm. You're doing shows locally. You're doing stuff with mm-hmm. uh, IWC. And there was another organization uh, f- north of Pittsburgh in Butler County. That's north of Allegheny. Allegheny is the county that, that Pittsburgh's in. Uh, Butler County is north of that. There's a uh, an organization called uh, FNW, right? Which stood for Foreign Earth Wrestling. And the guy that owned that, his son was into wrestling. And you- so I wrestled for Foreign Earth Wrestling yeah. and Deep South Wrestling. Oh, uh, pretty neat. Right? Pretty neat, right? Yeah. Oh, now hold on. For, so what? Foreign Earth Wrestling, the owner of that, his son, who you end up be, kind of getting close with. Uh, I mean, you guys are pretty close, kind of. I mean. But you end up tagging. You end up tagging. If you're going to do this, right. yeah, you got to choose your terminology. Okay. Well, what would you say? Getting close. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm okay. messing with <laughs> So, so the 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 yeah guy, yeah we can be good, but what's his name? Friend, Sterling. Sterling Keenan and John Bullen. Yeah. So that, Corey yeah. or Matt Polinsky. Okay, Matt yeah. Polinsky, yes. who is uh, today in, in the WWE. His name's Corey yeah. Graves, yeah. And, and you guys have a uh, you guys worked a. a some matches together. Even worked a dark match mm-hmm. um, for uh, WWE. Yeah. Right? And um, you got you both you guys end up getting signed, but you got signed first. Mm-hmm. You got signed first. Now, can I tell a story about you getting signed for, from my aspect of things? Sure. Okay. So in the same complex, that the nightclub and, and bars we worked in, there was a nightclub called Matrix. And yes. the guy that ran that place, his name's Archie. And he, he's a well-known Pittsburgh bar owner. He, he owns a bar in the south side of Pittsburgh called Archie's. Um, so here he's coming over one night uh, to the nightclub that I'm working at, which is Margarita Mama's. And he walks up the stairs, and he sees myself, uh, Tim Novosel, who's the general, general manager at the time, and Steve Carrot, who's the professional strongman. Right. And he looked over at me. He didn't say anything to them. He looks over at me, and he goes, hey, your boy's getting signed. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, I got a buddy that works with a, a WWE and your boy's getting signed. I go, no shit. And then here, you end up telling me later on, like, hey, they offered me, you know. I, I, I think I, I waited like two weeks. Till yeah, you, you, you. Tell, you didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell anybody. And uh, then I remember you went up to uh, a gym called Body Tech in the North Hills, which is called P- Powerhouse oh, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you met yeah, Dave yeah. Hawk. Yes. Dave Hawk was the... Uh, manager of Kurt Angle. Yes. And Dave was kind of, I guess, maybe giving you a little motivation. He your looked contract. over, yeah, he, right. I guess, he, yeah, he looked over my contract and yeah. made sure everything was pretty cool. And, That's good. Yep. 
That's awesome. A little paperwork. Now, when you got signed, who, how do you get signed? Like, do you get a phone call? Do, do, do who re- reached out to you? Do you remember? <laughs> Nobody reached out to me. Um, or was it after the show you worked? Were they like, hey? I did uh, <clears throat> for that entire weekend. Okay, I was kind of booked as an extra. You get paid to become an extra for WWE. Okay, and you show up, and for weeks, yeah, or every time prior to, you'd show up. They'd hand you your money and be like, "We don't have anything for you. Go eat." Okay, so I would still pay you. Yeah, I still get paid, Hmm. and I would murder the buffet. Oh, nice. So actually, and um, we'll call him Corey. Okay, Corey and I were booked in Wheeling and then Dayton the next day. But we were booked in Wheeling. And we just rode there together, and we were just, like, extras. You know, it was, like, no big deal. Right. Hey, hey, what are, you know, you meet up. All right, hey, what are, you know, like, thinking, like, nothing's going to happen, right? But this was different. Like, for some reason, we get in the car, and he had just had a deal, a tryout with OVW, which I didn't even know existed. Like, I was so new to the game. Yeah. And... We get in the car and he's like, "Man, I think I'm gonna get signed." And I was like, "I think I'm gonna have a match." You know, like I just had this feeling like I was gonna have a match. I was like, "I'm not gonna." Pay. I brought all my meals and stuff because I always packed all my meals. Except still for, do. Like, you're still, still prep. Yeah, you're still prep. But like, yeah. you know, anytime you were an extra, you'd be like, "Oh man, I wonder what catering's gonna have." Like, I'm gonna go fuck up some oatmeal raisin cookies, and I'd literally <laughs> eat like thirty of them. Yeah. Right, but like, uh, and they'd have like you know fillet, ch- like come on, dude. It was a good spread, yeah, huh? dude, bro. Come on. Of course, it's WWE, right? Yeah. Right. So, like, I just ate my meals, whatever. And then um, I just remember being at the ring. And I was 11 months into it. 11 months? Less than a year? Less than a year into it. And I just remember Hulk, or not Hulk. I remember Sergeant, I don't know I said Hulk. Sergeant Slaughter talking to. Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah, was talking to Matt. That's crazy. And I just see him pointing. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? You know, and then, uh. He's like, you and your buddy have a tag against the the new pit bulls. And I was like, cool. And my heart dropped below my balls. I was yeah. like, what the shit? Yeah. And I remember Jamie Noble coming up, being like, how long you been in the business? You know, and I was Is like. That, that's uh, not, that's yeah, not gonna, a work, huh? That's his real like. Well, yeah, uh, he's got a southern accent. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it happens. Like, yeah. You're going to see you right. outside, you're going to have a southern accent. Sure. And I was like 11 months, and I remember him turning to Ricky Steamboat because that was the agent of our match. And he's like, Ricky, he's only been in the ring for 11 months. And then we tied up, you know, and then uh, went over to match. He felt you out a little bit. Yeah, you yeah. know, see, it was like with the tie-up, whatever. Everything right. was cool. And then went in the ring, ran some stuff, and then him and Kid Cash did some double-team moves to me and whatnot. And I remember specifically remember putting the match together and the first move I ever did, the first, like, move in a WWE ring I ever did was the press slam. And, like, I will say this. Like, growing up, when you take the Christmas tree out, you know? I yeah. beat the shit out of the Christmas tree as a kid. Like, I'd always press slam and do the power moves. Yeah, like, sure. You know, all that stuff. Anyway, and then I can remember in my wrestling training, always press slamming people. And this one dude being like, you're never going to press slam anybody. Right? This one dude who trained me. I'd be like, man, kiss my ass, whatever, you know, because I was strong enough. I didn't sure. like, like You're okay, I was five, you know, 10, right, 230, to, you know, legit, like right. 230, and I had a 700 pound bench, right? You're a freak, like, yeah, I want to pick you up over my fucking head and slam you, right? Right, so, but like, visual was, you know, because you're short, whatever, yeah. So then Ricky was like, do you think you could press slam Jamie? And I'm like, oh, Steamboat said that, yeah, mm. and I was just like, are you kidding me? With one hand, like, come on, let's go. You're geeked out. So we did, yeah, we did, yeah. So like, that was kind of cool. The first move I ever did. But he raked my eyes, and I flipped over the top rope. All right, so so (laughs) so uh, afterwards, you end up getting a shot here. Afterwards, oh, after I just remember selling back to the ring. I took the pin. I remember selling back to the ring, and I get in the gorilla position, which is where you're at right before you go at, and it's where a lot of producers are at. Why not? Vince is there. I'm sure you've heard whatever. I don't know. I never saw Vince that scenario. But um well he was there. Okay. I guess Hunter's there now. All right. So um I just remember getting back and Ricky losing his shit. Just being like, Oh my god, that was like just putting over because I sold. Yeah. Like that's what the big deal was that I sold. Nice. And then he's like, I gotta take you to meet Johnny Ace and is uh <laughs> 
excuse me, I guess it's, I don't want to say pig headed. Trying to think of the good word. Anyway, as, uh, whatever. Damn it. I'm trying to think of the Sorry, word. Buddy. Anyway, um, I didn't even know who the hell Johnny Ace was. Here was my problem with wrestling. Go ahead. Right? This is my dead ass serious problem right, with wrestling. Right, right. Right? This is like, we could open up. Um, Everything that I was really, really good at, like really, really, really good at, I had to work really, really hard at. Like football, I had to walk on. I walked on. I wanted to play nose. It was the most alpha position ever. I was the shortest guy on the football team. So I had where, you know. I real real quick, for the record here, yeah. you were a, a, an All-American. You're yeah. Division Two All-American. Yes. At five foot ten, two 230 pounds. Yeah. Nose tackle. Yeah. That's very impressive. For so, those listening that don't understand that, that's really impressive. But go ahead. So, like, you know, like, I had to work my ass off. Right. Okay. Everything you wanted in life, you want you had to put in extra. Right. And professional wrestling came like that. Hmm. Like, 11 months got signed. Like, did that contest. That's quick. Signed. Right. That's quick. Too quick. Too quick hmm. as in, one, I didn't know the whole psychology of matches. Two, I... I didn't know the game. Yeah. Like that whole, when Hunter says that whole, like, I am the, like, dude, right. that's a legit shoot. Yeah. You better know the goddamn game. Yeah. Inside right. and out of the ring. I didn't. Yeah, that, and that, it was a lack of respect. That is really huge. Fresh, and the fact right? that I admit that, like, that, dude, my downfall in wrestling yeah. was I didn't give it, like, I should have watched film. I should have, like, yeah, I lifted and I tan, but they, right. like, always lifted. So, so you, when you get signed and they send you down to Louisville, Kentucky, right? Who's running uh, OVW at the time? At Ohio that Valley time, Wrestling. Danny Davis, I believe, owned it. Okay. And Al Davis or Al Snow. Al ran. Snow. Al Snow. Head. Head. Yes. How was How was he? Awesome. Al, he was good. Yeah. Al's the man. Al's a funny son. Al's a funny dude. Man. <laughs> so down there at OVW at that time, this was 06. You. This yes. was 2006. Um, you, you know OVW. For those that don't know, the training uh, facility and developmental program, you're talking about guys that came out of there in the early 2000s. Brock Lesnar, John Cena, Dave Batista, Dude, Randy it Orton. So stacked. It was unbelievable. So in 06, who are you down there with? Give me some names. Punk. CM Punk. CM Punk's down there. Okay. Okay. Um, Swagger. The Swagger dude. Swagger showed up there. Uh, let's see. Deuce and Domino. I don't know if you remember them. I do they remember They had a small stint yeah, in uh, yeah, SmackDown. Yeah. Uh, Cody Rhodes was there. Damian Sandow was there. Some big names. Uh, Some big Santino. Names. Santino was there. Who's the sock? Santino Morella. Yeah. 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 The yeah. snake. Who the, at that time was Boris Alexiev, I think his name was. Okay. Well, there's some big names there. Yeah. There's some big names there. There's some, uh, yeah, dude, it was, it so, was pretty talented. The, the, uh, the, living, different, the living environment down there, they put you up in a place? No. You had to find your own? Yes. You're in a hotel? Yeah, until you find your own spot. Okay. Yeah. Uh, did you find a spot? Yes. You, you by yourself, roommate? No, I had lived uh, two places. I lived, Cody Rhodes and I lived together for like a couple months. And then I lived in a house. I lived in Nova's house. I don't know if you know Nova. Mike Bucci was his name. Oh, uh, yeah. Supernova. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, he yeah. was um, also, uh, shit, Simon Dean. Okay. Is that, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Really getting shape. Dude. So, uh, and then it was me. Santino Morella, Damian Sandow, Shelly Martinez, and that was just a okay. That was a hilarious living situation. Yeah, that was awesome, dude. Ah, uh, so uh, Cody Rhodes, though, that's uh, for those that don't know him, he's still active. He's with the WWE, and he is the son of Dusty Rhodes. Dusty yeah. Rhodes was a uh, uh, Hall of Fame living legend. Him and Flair go go back. Ric Flair him, did so many different uh, things together. So when you're down there, you eventually uh, get your pink slip. How how, how does how does that happen like, how does one how does one get told hey you know do they do they let it down do they let you down gently here they go hey you know kid you you, you look you got some talent maybe work on a little bit come back and talk to us or it like. depends um how'd i get mine i remember i was in atlanta we're in deep south you're in deep south and i was tagging with a dude named sean osborne okay who isn't here anymore he, he's deceased he's passed. yes okay and uh, we had, I want to say it was like two weeks prior to, we had just a shit match. The two of you. It was absolute 
like the drizzling shit. It was okay. terrible. D- did they tell you about it? Like, do, I knew after Al Snow come up to I, you and go, no, "Hey, Al wasn't there. This okay. is in Deep South." Okay, so Doctor Tom Pritchard was the man there. Oh, he's running. Yeah, Deep he's South. running the show down there. Okay, and it was different. Like OVW, you would have like four or five, sometimes six shows a week, like legit. Okay, like you re- there really wasn't. You'd have like one or two classes. Okay, where you're going over shit. Yeah. But like it was just it was shows. It was cool, dude. You were on the road. You were wrestling. Constant. I'm not, you learned in the ring like they did back in the day. It's trial by fire here. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And you would do you would like experiment shit. Like, hey man, let's see if this works. Because right. then you'd have TV on Wednesdays at down at OVW. At Deep South, you had one show. That's it. TV. So you would train for like three hours. Hmm. And the rest of the day you were it's like, okay, go watch, go lift. Or, you know, but like okay. it wasn't like getting but Three hours of technical learning. You know what I'm saying? It's probably good for you. Like, dude, yeah, that's what I needed. You yeah. know, I totally needed that. Yeah. So we have this really ass match, right? Okay. And then two weeks later, we have this really, really, really kick ass match. I mean, like, I can't remember. Working with the same guy. Oh no. Who the hell yeah. It was me and um it was me and Osborne against TJ. What's his face? Come on. I'm so shit with names. That's all right. He's a great dude. TJ. Nat, Natalia's dude, TJ. Oh. Tyson. Yeah, Tyson. Tyson. I know who you're talking about. Right. Yeah, yeah. And Harry Smith. Okay. Dude. That's a British Bulldogs. Yes, British Bulldogs. Davey so, Boy Smith, yes. the British Bulldogs. There was a tag team in the 80s called the British Bulldogs. Yeah. It was Davey Boy Smith and who's uh, the other guy's a stud? Dynamite. Dynamite Kid. Dynamite Kid. That was who, a great from, team. From what I understand from what Danny Davis told me was – the baddest, the baddest dude ever. I think I think uh, Steve Austin said the same thing too. Steve Austin was like that dude's a, a that dude's a badass. Yeah, like legit badass. Legit. Uh, so you're wrestling with this kid. So yeah, you have a great match. We, like it was, and those two were awesome. Those two are really. There's some bags of shit in the world. And yeah, some you find ones. that in all industries, right? Anyway, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But like these two dudes were like super fucking cool. And That's like cool. Tyson came up with the, the whatever it is, Tyson TJ. Came up with the finish, which was so dope, right? Yeah. And uh, it was like a sunset flip, flip, whatever. Anyway, and I just remember we watched it on film. And it was one of those deals where, like, we're watching on film, and Dr. Tom was putting it over. Like, it was like, like he was like, dude. In fact, even Bucci called me because he was the head of developmental at the time. When I got hired, the head of, the head of developmental was Dreamer. Right. Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer. At ECW. ECW. Yes. And then big names Nova yeah. took over. Right? Yeah. So then I remember Nova being like, "Who came up with that finish?" And I, was, you know, TJ. Or I was like, "I did. It was my idea." Yeah, no, <laughs> TJ did. You know, yeah. oh man, super cool. Whatever. So then Dr. Tom's were watching film, you know, going over, it, and I just I specifically remember him saying, "You guys are performing magic out there," because when they were working my arm, they're chanting, "Break his arm." And that's what you want. You want the crowd right. reaction. You, do, you want the crowd involved. And I was the heel, and they wanted to see me get my arm broken. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. With this arm is so... I know it's the best biceps in the world. <laughs> of Don't course you got to do this. Okay. So anyway, um, I remember we were eating... Uh, we were at a buffet, and I... Just, Where like, at? Uh, Ryan's. Okay. The right. Golden this, Corral. The Golden Corral. Ryan's right. in Atlanta. All right. Or not Atlanta, in McDonough, Georgia. And my phone rang, and it just said Nova calling, and it was right after Mania. Huh. And I looked at everybody and I went, Nova's calling. I'm getting fired. Did they tell you why? And I walked out and they said developmental or they said, uh, they say it's early, normal excuse. They don't have anything for your character. Okay. D- d- did they give you any like uh, hope for the future? They go, hey, you know, work the independent circuit, you know, of course. work on your game and then come that. back and stuff like that. Yeah. All right. So you, you leave there, but you continue to wrestle. Uh, took time off for a little bit, but okay. then yeah, I started kept going on with it. Okay, yeah. so I'm gonna take a minute here, and I'm gonna read a list of names of guys uh-huh. that you worked with. Okay? okay, sure. And if you can think of any names while I'm reading it, at the end, let me know if I missed anybody. Go ahead. So for the listening audience that are wrestling fans, lay it on me. All right. This is a list of notable names that our guest here today, John Bolin. <laughs> Has worked with in the ring. And you ready? All of them. You ready? Sure, go ahead. Marty Janetti. What's that guy away? He was, hold on, he was half What's of the. What's that guy away? He, he was half of the. What's ro- that guy away? He was half of the Rockers. You better know with, what I'm doing. Sean Sha- Michaels. You better know who I'm doing. 
Go ahead. All yeah. right. All right, next. Kevin Nash. What's he weigh? <laughs> All right. That's All a big right. guy. All What's right. he weigh? Let me let me get through Do this. Do you have any idea who I'm doing? Who are you doing? You're such a mark. Do, you go don't ahead. even know. Go ahead, next guy. Scott Steiner. What's he? Wow. What's he? <laughs> Scott Steiner. Let me get through this list. You're such a mark. You don't even remember Or Donovan? No. You don't remember that no. dude? He played football for the Indianapolis or for the Baltimore Corps. And for some reason, they had him as commentary on a WWF show. Did back. they? Yeah. And it was a fucking battle royal. And every some bitch that came out, he would be like, wow, he's big. What's he weigh? John, and you pissed down your leg with that one. He is such sorry, a man. I apologize. Mark. I am a shitty more. Yes, uh, all right. So we got Mar- Marty Gennetti, Kevin Nash, Scott yeah. Steiner. Yeah. Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner. Uh-huh. He's also one half of the Steiner Bros. I-, I marked out for him right there. Uh, King Kong Bundy. Yes. That, dude, King Kong Bundy was WrestleMania 2. Deuce. All right. Uh, Bobby Lashley, still active. Yeah. Ryan Reeves, a.k.a. Ryback. Yes. Abyss. Yes. Alberto Del Rio, Scotty Too Hotty, Billy Gunn, X Pac, Road Dog Jesse James, Carlito, The Sandman, Tommy Dreamer, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Rhino, Matt Hardy, Jimmy Snuka, The Nasty Boys, Gangrel, George Tyrus, Kofi Kingston, Rob Conway, Rene Dupree, Sylvan Grenier, La Resistance, uh, <laughs> Doc Gallows, Damian Sandow, Val Venus, and of course Corey Graves. Holy shit, dude! Holy shit! So now I got to ask this question. I have to. Go ahead, Mark. You, you worked with all these guys. You worked with all these and guys. And I beat them all. <laughs> you worked with all these for guys. the one, and two. I'll tell you what. I, I watched the match with Bobby Lashley. I watched the match with Kevin Nash. You're a professional. These guys are like Hall of Fame level professional wrestlers. Like, I mean, a, a lot of those names on there. Our Hall of Fame level professional wrestler. So I got to ask you the question. Why I do, kick ass at everything I do. You do. I get it. I know. Why do you think you haven't got another shot? What do you think it was? You think it was an age thing? You think it was, I mean, what do you think it was? Well, me and Gene, um, let's see here. <sighs> Honestly, I mean, if you were to really evaluate things and go, uh, did you piss somebody off down there? Did you? One, I'm sure I pissed somebody off. Okay. I'm sure I pissed more than one off. Okay. I'm sure I pissed a lot more than right. one off. We don't have Two, to get into anything like that. Right. Just, that's Two, right. Um, today's day and age, it's all about, like, you know, getting, pumping your shit out there, public, your, you know. Social media. Right. And I just, nah. You're not into Kiss it. Kiss my ass, dude. No Twitter. Don't fucking follow me, and I sure as shit ain't going to follow you. No Twitter, no Instagram. Okay? You have like, a Facebook profile? You, yeah, but, like. You don't use it to promote anything. I don't know. No, and that was just wasn't me. Like that's where, like, and this is where, and I don't, I don't want to say real. God for no, right? Because like when people come up to me and go, "Oh, that wrestling was fake," like, yeah, I want to beat the shit out of them, right, dude? Because I've heard a lot of things in my life, yeah, from Ashley, anyway, for sure. Um, but it's like, like I told you before, like one, I didn't, I wasn't a student of the game. Does that make sense? Yes. Right. Okay, you're starting this podcast, right? Like, how right. many, how many people? This is how many podcasts have you guys? This is my second one. Second one. So there's one person before me, right? Correct. What kind of shit is that? <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. I'm number two. I know. No, anyway, you should have um, been number one, dude. Should have, could have, whatever. Right. Anyway, but like, God no, my point. Yeah, right. Pissed on your leg again. <laughs> so, wait. So real quick, who was the guy that slapped John Stossel? Uh, Oh God, Doctor D. David. Yeah, well, I, he was when the best. people say that, they go, "Hey, it's it's not real; it's fake." Uh, wrestlers, uh, historically speaking, they would take that really personally because these All guys. Right, let me tell you some some real shit. These guys, these these guys Here, do put their bodies shit. through shit. I broke my dick in a wrestling match. I tore my urethra, dead serious, in a wrestling match. Came down, and I always kept it quiet because I'm not gonna. Have, I I don't like the people that are like. Oh, it's just, it's fake, or is right. it it's still real? And right. then they show, like, their scars. No, dude, don't show your shit. Don't. Like, we, like, you signed up for it. Right. This shit's gonna happen. Don't promote it. Don't be like, oh, it's just fake, and then you show a bruise. You shouldn't have a bruise. You should be able to work the next goddamn day. My point is, is like, yeah, I, you know. You broke your dick. Broke my, <laughs> tore my urethra. <laughs> you know, like. So I remember that people, time, by yeah, the way. Yeah, bro. And when people were like, were oh, it's pain. fake, I'm like. You were in some real what pain. The f- like fake. Here, let me do this to you. You know. Yeah, you like, were in some real pain. But a I, bit. I, yeah, mine it happens. All right. So, <clears throat> going forward now, do do you still have plans to wrestle? Because the most recent show you worked was uh, a little bit ago at 
what used to be the Rex Theater. It's now called Enclave. They have shows there. Uh, it's on uh, it's on East Carson Street in the south side of Pittsburgh. They have uh, a nice venue there. They do some shows. Uh, Antonio Brown's that there. Juvenile, pretty sweet. Antonio Brown. Yeah, no money for white woman. Right. So that's here, the 2022 version of so, uh, Freebird. All right. So here, here you uh-huh. do a show there recently. How recently was that? I'm. I'm I don't know. Disregard. I disregard what? Come what on, you're saying? Funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that's not the 2022 I, version of Freebird. Dude, I knew this was a possibility. What? Come on, are, what was listen, a possibility? Uh, the, because I'm just shitting on no, somebody's and song. I love it. And I'll tell you what, your personality. This is, is why. So listen, great. This is why. Okay, it's so great. Why do it I fail so at wrestling? Because I won't do the social media shit. Because yeah. I know I'll get in trouble. I'll get banned. I'll be Andrew Tated in a heartbeat. Whoever that cat is. Right. I don't even he know got that right. Did he get banned? Or wait, am I not something. supposed to say his name or whatever? I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't really mean, know. Because I know I I'll hurt somebody's feelings. I don't really know who that the guy is really, but uh, yeah, he got booted off. All right, so would I like so to wrestle again? Sure. I okay. loved performing. Performing was awesome. And you're an athlete. Performing was cool. Whatever, I guess. You know, I could tie my own shoes and yeah. walk. And like, honestly, like, um, I guess to show the more humane side of it. The, when they say like connecting to the fans, yeah, it's not just connecting to the fans. Like when you can get somebody who like can't do what you can, and you take it, you you don't take it for granted. It's just like everyday things. Like, hey, I could run, right? Yeah, you know, there's people that can't, right? And when you could like connect with them, that was the cool shit. That was like, I've seen it. I've seen it uh, firsthand. I've, yeah. I've I've been to your shows and I've seen the way the crowd and the way that people react to you and also after shows and stuff like that in the independent circuit a lot of people don't know this you, you can make some money by selling your own merchandise See, that's to me like that right? which you you have to do you have to do and that, i just always felt weird doing that right i always felt like i'm whoring myself out whatever but you should you have to right, right. And that's why i never i didn't go balls in like if i could find somebody who could like if i could be like hey listen you do all my social media bullshit yeah I'll tell you what to say. You decipher it so they don't chastise me and hang me out to dry. Sure, like, you know, right. Public hanging. Yep. And make me sound somewhat literate. Beautiful. <laughs> do it. Right? And then I go There's wrestle. There's people out there that will do that for you, John. Because I did, whatever, you know, like yeah. they come to me. But I've seen I, you interact yeah, with fans. Whatever. I've seen you interact with fans. They come up to you. They want pictures, and you're always nice. Just like just like going going back to what I said about my dad, you, you just were good with people. And, and you still are. You really are. Like, I guess. Thank you. Yeah, you absolutely. Are. You're good with people, and you're, you're, there's some, uh, there's, you're, dude, you have a, a magnetism about you. You're, people are, are are drawn to you. You enter a room, and 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 you're captivating as well. People look and go, oh, who's this guy? Um, so, as as we're wrapping things up, I do have to, I do have to say this. What? you and and th- I'm kind of marking out for you for right what? here. Why? You've Be- known me for too long. Don't. Well, that. no, you are. Uh, you're one of the most disciplined and consistent and hardest working guys I knew back in that time where you hadn't gotten signed yet. You were in the gym, <clears throat> excuse me, you were in the gym constantly as a personal trainer and then also working your own stuff. I mean, you, you, you right, you're staying in shape because you, just like you said, you're half naked in a ring. You got to look at the best you, you can, better. right? right. And that's part of the gig. Um, but you were working at night, bouncing uh, in, in a nightclub, right. making cash there. And then you were on the road on the weekends doing shows, training guys i think iwc at the time you were going down there helping train new guys coming in right doing all that stuff the work ethic the meal prepping and all that stuff i i, I don't know if i've seen anybody that has quite the work ethic that you had at that Man, time so dude, anybody who's made it in that business has done the same shit right well i i they saw meal prepped to see it firsthand to see it firsthand was like uh, i saw what you went through i saw what you went through and and it was it's it's super impressive <laughs>